Hello, and welcome to episode 41 of the Physique Development Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about reverse engineering. So within this, it's really looking at reverse engineering to make sure that you see stronger results or to help you reach your goals. It's something that I really talk through with clients, and it's even something that we do within planning out preps and dieting phases, and again, to help our clients as a whole. So um, it is something where I wanted to look up the like specific definition to be able to kind of pull from that to dive into what I wanted to talk about. Um, So a big thing within reverse engineering before I get into the the nitty gritty is it forces you to consider the obstacles that may rise and do an assessment of your current circumstance. So at the core of it, it's just stopping to consider and assess. That's what I really, really want you to take from this. So um, when we look at the definition, some of them came up as it's to deconstruct, to extract information. Another one said it's a process or method used to understand through deductive reasoning how a previously made device process system or piece of software accomplishes a task um, and with very little insight into exactly how to do it. So I do want to highlight that you don't need to know how to do everything. You don't need to be a fitness coach or a fitness guru to be able to do this. It's really just assessing, considering, and working on what you're doing as a whole. So it's also used to analyze and gain knowledge about the way something works. So it's the process of gaining knowledge. Uh, And then another one said it's to uh, um, repurpose, gain a competitive advantage, or teach someone about how something works. So if you were originally like, well, I don't really know how to do something, it's to teach you how to do that thing as well. Um, And how the reverse engineering process works, it normally comes in three parts. So information extraction is part one, so collecting information. Part two is modeling. So you take that information and you put it into a conceptual model. So the purpose of this is to take information and abstract it into a general model or thought process that can be used. And then the third thing is to review or test. So I wanted to dive into that a little bit more when it comes to fitness and how that can help you reach your goals. Uh, So within this, it is something that Let's go ahead and use the example weight loss. It's a very easy example to use. I know that I use it quite a lot, but it is a very easy example to use. So let's go ahead and say someone wants to lose weight um, or they say, like, I want to lose 10 pounds. First, you want to start with asking yourself some questions. So why weight loss? Why 10 pounds? Is it actually because the number on the scale or it's something that last time you weighed 10 pounds less, you felt better, or maybe you feel uncomfortable in your clothes right now or something like that, really diving in and asking questions into why. And I do want to take a quick little sidestep. I'll have this post linked in the show notes, but to talk about a, a post that I made in regards to diving into you. So I made a post and it said, the more you dive into you, what makes you tick, what sets you up for success, what habits you need to form or change, the way you react, communicate, the better life and you get. Uh, so it's something that I want to read a little bit of the caption here because I think it really does apply diving into this whole thing of learning and asking questions is really going to help you figure out the process that you need to do to reach the goals that you want to. So it's something where, again, starting with this caption, growing up seems to just be the process of learning about yourself and the world around you. But it also seems a lot of people forget to do the self-learning. Figuring out you can be hard. In fact, it can be really stinking hard. Some of it might require the help of a therapist, and it will undoubtedly require love and support from yourself and others. So why do the hard? Why try to figure all this out? Um, Because it's worth choosing. Yes, you get to choose your heart a lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time, and it's worth the discomfort, the trial and error is worth the more. So you can get so much more out of life and yourself when you ask yourself questions like, how can I be better? Why did I react that way? What could I change to help myself? What am I doing right now that's not helping? How did my actions impact those around me? What promises do I keep breaking? What would allow me to feel my best? And again, there's many more questions here, but it's a great spot to start. So when I finally started looking in instead of out, everything started to shift. So it's something that when you really dive inwards and ask yourself and pause 
to ask yourself those questions, that's where a lot of growth comes from. So let's go ahead and get back to the example of scale weight. So you've already asked yourself, uh, why is it 10 pounds? Uh, Is it because you just like that number on the scale? Or if you previously weighed that number, you liked how you felt, your clothes are uncomfortable. What is it about 10 pounds? So then it's something that, all right, now that I've figured out why it's 10 pounds I want to lose or what the situation is within that weight loss, what are some benchmarks for me to be able to reach that goal? So again, you're working backwards. My goal is to lose 10 pounds or I want to lose 10 pounds. So let me go ahead and work backwards. I've asked myself why it's 10 pounds. I've figured out whatever that reason is. Now it's all right to lose 10 pounds. What am I going to do? I'm probably going to need to lose about a a pound, around a pound a week. So how long will it take me to get to that? All right, a pound per week. It'll take me about 10 pounds um, on average to be able to reach that goal. So I have now a realistic standard of I'm not going to lose 10 pounds in two weeks. I'm going to lose 10 pounds in 10 to 12 weeks. Um, So being able to set that standard for yourself is going to be really helpful. Um, Then you want to go ahead and keep digging back. So what is it that you need to change about your life right now is going to be a good question to ask. Um, So you might need to change your eating habits or your training schedule or your cardio or your sleep schedule or your stress levels. You might need to change all of those things. You might need to just change one, but let's go ahead and start with just one because you can't always change everything at once. Um, So let's say, how do I adjust my current training to reach my goal? Maybe you're not training at all. That's going to be adding training sessions in. If you're not training at all and going to training, you need to now think, all right, if I'm going to add training in, how much of my time is that going to take? My sessions are probably going to be around 45 minutes to an hour. Maybe I have a 10 or 20 minute commute to the gym. I need to factor that in as well to be able to get in there, get warmed up, do my session and get back home and take account of also, all right, how long is it going to take me to get my clothes on, get dressed, get out the door and get to the gym? And these are questions, again, you need to ask yourself for your specific situation. Um, Then let's go ahead and say, that you need to take the next step of revising your food. Are you tracking your food right now at all? Um, And even if you are not tracking your food or don't plan to track your food, it's knowing what those next steps are. So, all right, I'm not tracking my food, but I want to track my food. My first step is going to be finding out what intake I'm doing right now. Let's say I'm not tracking my food and I don't want to track my food. Now it's going to be looking at the food that I'm eating and deciding on portion sizes and how I'm going to create that deficit. Um, Or maybe it's I just need to start making a plan for my food. So let's take another step to the side real quick, where one of my goals was, hey, I want to make sure that I hit my macros um, and I have all of my food ready to go to do that. So outside of hitting, just hitting my macros, which I'll have this show linked, um, it's a very popular show of how to hit your macros consistently and with ease. It's a really great episode with a lot of great tips. So I'm not going to dive too much into that. But I know something that's really, really helpful for me is pre-planning, because that also helps cut out decision fatigue, which I really struggle with of making too many decisions in a day. So it's something of being able to say, all right, I want to hit my food or I want to have a better plan for my food. Because before, like a a few months ago, I was feeling not that I couldn't hit my food, I can always hit my food, but it is something where I was feeling very worn down by hitting my food and that's not a good place to be in. And so I kind of looked back and I sat down with a pen and paper and Alex and I wrote down, all right, what times do we want to eat at throughout the day so that him and I had a clear expectation of what time we are going to be eating um, and what that looked like, as well as what meals were going to be provided at that time. So we kind of had nailed down our breakfast, which we've had the same breakfast for about a year. So that was, you know, easy to set aside, but we did nail down a time because our times had been fluctuating between 8 a.m. to noon that we were eating breakfast. So we set a time frame that we were going to be in to eat breakfast. And then we went through our lunch and not always can we eat lunch together, but we did have a plan for what those meals were going to be. The next two meals were a little bit more difficult because those are normally more flex meals, whether it's we're going out for something or we're meeting someone or it's just a little bit more flexible because those first two meals we really love, those are set in stone, we're good to go. So then it was, all right, what meals do we like having for dinner and what meals are either easy for me to prep or easy for me to prep ahead of time or easy for me to make in bulk. So we made a list of all of our favorite dinners that are easier. Then we made a 
list of dinners that are going to be every once in a while. And then from there, I was able to put together, all right, for this week, we're going to have sandwiches. So now I can put together my grocery list to make sure that I can get everything so we have the right amount of things for our sandwiches. So it might seem like a ton to go through all of that, but that thing that we sat down and did for 10 or 15 minutes has helped us months and months moving forward. So one thing I realized is that second meal for lunch was something that was really taking me away from my work because I had to stop work um, once we decided that we were going to eat, which again, we didn't have a a super strict plan in place beforehand, um, and then make both of our meals, eat it, and then clean up and then get back to work. And I was having such a hard time getting away from work and back into the flow of work. So it was like, all right, let's go ahead and prep those in advance. So I started with, and you're going to use some trial and error here with anything that you do if you're reverse engineering and playing around with this. And that was one of the steps was review and testing, not review and implementation, review and testing if what you kind of worked backwards on is actually going to work and apply to your everyday life. And so I went ahead and I prepped like three meals for each of us in advance because it takes about three days for me to go bad. But then it was like, okay, every three days I'm sitting and making these meals and it's very helpful throughout the week, but it's very annoying to have to meal prep twice in a week. So then I um, I already had a vacuum sealer. I'd gotten it from my parents um, for an anniversary gift and I was like, hey, they've been talking about this thing and I haven't gotten given it a fair shot. So I tried. I had no idea if it was going to work. I tried bulking, making some meals um, and f- vacuum sealing them and then putting it, them in the freezer. And I wanted to see if when they thawed that they still tasted good because obviously taste still matters to me as well. So I was able to find out that, hey, if I freeze the meals, as long as I move them over to the fridge to de thaw or I defrost them in the microwave, they're all good to go. So I'm able to prep meals for, I mean, multiple months if I wanted to. What I have been doing is doing it for a week to two weeks at a time. And it has helped me so freaking much. And it literally started from me saying, hey, I have a problem with this and vocalizing that as well. And then sitting down for 10 or 15 minutes, making a plan, implementing that plan, realizing that I I probably could still revise that, went back, revised it, and now it saved me so much time, so much effort, so much decision fatigue, and so much um, more streamlined within my day-to-day. And that has helped me so freaking much because my mind can be a (laughs) very crazy place to be in, bouncing around. And that has just allowed me to have structure and make it so much easier for me just by sitting down and saying, hey, this thing isn't working. What's one step backwards of that? Um, So uh, getting back to the the 10 pound weight loss example as I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, it's something that once you've reverse engineered your big picture goals and you've gotten smaller goals to create your plan, it is something that um, like, again, let's say you you went over your resistance training like I talked about. Your, you went over your cardio plan. You went over your, tra- your food. You went over all of that. Um, it's something that you want to develop your game plan, trial it, and then revise it depending on how you need to do things to be able to move forward. So it's something that diving deeper into your thought process and deeper into your examples is going to be helpful. So some questions to ask yourself is what do I need to change right now in order for me to get to that point? And what might be an obstacle in using this strategy for me? So let's go ahead and go through a few more examples that could be helpful for you in regards to some different things that I've kind of come up with clients. Um, So I'll use myself one more time as an example before I dive into uh, possibly another example, but step goal. A step goal is something I have with a lot of clients, um, and it's something that I think is so, so helpful, and I can dive into the step goal and why I have it more if you're interested. And know in the uh, show notes, there's always a form that you can submit questions, whether you want us to dive deeper into something we've already kind of gone into. So let's say you listen to this and you're like, that was great information. I want more information on what Sue is talking about with steps. Or if you have a completely new question, you can always ask it in those show notes 
below um, within the link that is there for you. Um, but let's say steps. So my step goal is about 8,000, or it's not about, it's a minimum of 8,000 steps a day. Within that, it is something where if I am at my desk all day um, and working like I normally do, I get about three to 5,000 steps. Um, and so that obviously is not 8,000. So if I just go about my days as normal and don't make a plan for anything or don't work backwards, I'm going to get three to 5,000 steps on average. And then I could go into each check-in with Alex and be like, oh, I'm just not hitting my steps. But instead of saying, oh, this mo- this week I'm just going to hit my steps, all right, that does little to nothing in regards to me actually implementing hitting my steps. So let's go ahead and work backwards. All right, if I get three to 5,000 steps, on average, what's going to put me over that hump for the next three to 5,000 um, to be able to hit that 8,000? All right, if I go on a 20-minute W-A-L-K, my dogs are in the room, so I cannot say the word, Um, then that gets me about 2,000 steps. Um, And so it's also something that there's a lot of benefits of me getting outside, me getting some fresh air, me getting away from screens. Movement in general helps me so much. It helps my digestion. It helps my mental headspace. It helps so many aspects of my life, my recovery, everything. And I get the bonus of the dogs loving me because I'm taking them on a WALK. Um, and they get their exercise, which has been so helpful for their energy levels, as well as just ha- their temperament and everything. It's been so great. So there's a lot of benefits for it. And I know that, okay, 20 minutes on that WALK, I'm going to get about 2,000 steps. So if I got 5,000 steps and then I have the 2,000 steps from that W, then I just need a thousand more steps. And so it's something of, all right, within that, I'm going to be a little bit more intentional throughout my day. One of my things that I've kind of really put into place since I've moved here um, is that there is always going to have the laundry be done and the dishes be done and the sink be clean and the house is going to be more tidied up because I have a really bad habit of being messy. And so that also helps me get in some more steps because I'm walking around the house getting things cleaned up and putting things away. Um, I'll also do things like parking further away or taking the stairs or let's say that Alex and I are both downstairs and I know I still need more steps and he'll be like, oh, I forgot to get my glasses from upstairs or I want a snack, I'll be like, oh, I'll go get it um, so I can just get in some more steps and hit my goals. So it's not just about making the initiative of, oh, this week I'm going to hit my macros or this week I'm going to hit my steps. It's all right. I've obviously not hit them. What's going to allow me to make that happen? And this can honestly apply to anything in life, not just your steps and macros. It can apply to any kind of goal that you have or that you can reverse engineer a freaking camera, tear it all apart, see how it works and be able to go from there. But I think it's really, really important to dive into asking yourself questions because if you have a coach or even if you don't have a coach, this is something that you can see that progress forward that you need to by just simply asking yourself a question. Um, Another example is I was recently in a meeting and someone said, oh, I want to lose 90 pounds. And so just making that declaration can be really cool to be like, oh, I'm going to do this. But he was kind of like, well, I don't really know how to get there. And so it was, all right, let's go ahead and work backwards. What's going, what are you doing now? What do you need to do? What are those steps that you need to take to get where you want to go? So the more that you can dive into you, the more that you can ask yourself questions, the better things are going to get. Like I said in that post, when I started looking in instead of out, that's when everything changed. It wasn't, oh, this is too hard or I can't do this. It was, all right, I just need to make a plan to make sure this happens and try a few different things. It's even something where I was realizing I was having a hard time finishing my food before bedtime and I was eating too close to bed and then it was disrupting my digestion. And instead of saying, oh, my digestion stinks, I don't know why. First, I knew why. But second, I was able to look and say, all right, in order for me to feel my best, I need to stop eating at this time. That means my next, my prior three meals need to be around these time frames. So I was able to put that in place and be in a much better spot. My sleep was better, my digestion was better, and I was hitting my goals better. And then within that, I was also able to say um, that I are able, losing myself in my own description, I was able to 
have the times roughly that I had those meals, had those meals planned out. Um, and then it was able to, I'm talking a little bit of a circle, reach my goal. But you get the point here. Um, and I've given a few examples, but I think it's going to be really, really helpful for you to ask yourself some of those questions and to work backwards so that you can reach your goals. Because at the end of the day, you are in charge of you. Even if you do have a coach, a coach can't do something for you. Yes, there can be bad and good coaches. Um, but if you have the best coach in the world, but you don't do anything, you can't see progress forward. And that's no one's fault but your own. And the more that you take responsibility and accountability for what you're not doing to reach your goals, that's going to help you reach those. And that's not to sit here um, and first stand on a pedestal, or it's not to sit here and shame you. It's to say that I've been in your place. I have sat there and wondered why I'm not reaching my goals or wondered how to even reach my goals. And I've been left feeling very sad and defeated because of it. And so learning these different tactics has been extremely helpful for me to be able to feel more self-assured and more confident, as well as to reach my goals with ease. Uh, so I remembered why I started talking in circles about my meal timing. But the other thing I was going to say is the reason that I was eating later in the day is I would get caught up in work. And so not only of me knowing, hey, I need to have my last meal at this time for me to feel my best with my bedtime being at this time, I also realize that I need to set alarms on my phone to be able to remember when to eat because I will get lost in work. So that also goes into learning more about you, knowing what your tendencies and your habits are. If you know that you very easily forget things, then you need to put something in place to be able to remember that. Instead of thinking, well, this person doesn't need to do that to get that done, that's fine because that person's not you. And isn't it so cool that we're all different and we all like different things? And even more so on that point, it's how we all cohesively work together as a whole because there's a lot of things I don't like to do that other people love to do and it really works out for me and them. So within that, just know that you can reach your goals. You do need to take some accountability. You do need to put work forward, but it can be a lot easier if you kind of work backwards to get to where you want to go. So thanks so much for joining us again. If you have questions to submit, then go ahead and put them in the um, link that's in the show notes. And then a post, the post that I referred to will also be in the show notes as well as the podcast. And then if you guys are interested, we'll also have information on the Physique Development Training Club linked below as well. But thank you so much and we'll see you next time.